I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Woo, woo, it's 2020, y'all! We are back with the Batwoman After Show and super excited to discuss all things Batwoman with you today. So hello, mwah. I am your host, Ellie Gona Bradford, joined by this wonderful and amazing lady, I am Katie Kawamoto, and I am happy to be back with you guys in 2020. Yeah, and of course, you're always welcome to join us. Now, today it's a little bit different. Typically, we're live. You can still co-host with us, but you're going to be leaving comments below and let us know what you thought of today's episode, and we can continue the conversation via social media. So don't forget to do that. And of course, hashtag everything ABTV Batwoman when you're on social media. Now, let's dive in because it is the 10th episode and how queer everything is today. It's a great episode, great theme, but first and foremost, we're going to start with our hashtag badass beast of this episode. Would you like to do the honor of going first? Yeah, I was, oh yeah, I forgot I did that. All right. So on this one, I was kind of like not quite sure who I thought my badass beast would be, but I'm going to go with Mary. Oh, you took mine! Okay, I know, I'm sorry, but it's mainly because her monologue when she goes on social media and she does her like, I'm not going to be on social media for a bit Uh and like trying to cope with stuff and being someone who has also had to take a step away from social media myself, I found that very realistic and Mm -hmm. very just like honorable that someone who's whole life is on social media per se even though she has a, alter, a facade. Alter ego yeah. facade um but just her speech about how you know mankind i don't know where my faith in humanity is yeah and i know that's a weird way to say that she's a badass but she was able to be a little bit more vulnerable and honest and i right. feel like that's a badass thing to do so agreed my, yeah high five Okay, great. Oh, that was bad. Like, there we go. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, I agree. Um, but for different reasons, I was going to make her my badass beast. And that's because of the fact that throughout whatever she's going through, and you can call it coping, you can call it whatever, but she is dealing with mourning the loss of her mother, but she's still so gung-ho on trying to get her stepfather out. And she's dealing with rejection after rejection. And it's not just any rejection. It's people telling her that she's crazy. And that's... That's hard, you, you know, especially yeah. when she's talking to clinical, like other doctors, she's studying to be a doctor and she just wants somebody to give her a chance and she just keeps going. And the fact that she actually listens to Sophie when she talks about, you know, why don't you talk to Kate? She's dealt with losing a loss of her mother of her own. Mm-hmm. And so finally come at ep- the end of the episode, when Kate does show up, you know, just everything drops and she, again, makes herself vulnerable and takes her Kate in for this hug. And I was like, oh, my God. It takes yeah. so, you know, you take your pride and everything else and your anger, you balled up and you throw it out the door and just be human. Yeah. So. And I like that, that she seems kind of to be the most human part about the show, in my opinion. She mm-hmm. seems more human than the rest of the people. She doesn't seem like static. Right. If that makes sense. If that, I can't think of the right word for it. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. So. Um, you know what, since you brought up, let's just talk about Mary. Since she is our badass beast, we'll get into that topic and then we can work our way around into the episode because I also want to talk about the very beginning, um, collecting my life. Hold on. (laughs) I do that sometimes (laughs) if you guys don't know me by now. Um, anyways, so she's trying to figure out all this stuff and, and, um, let's start over. (laughs) Kate walks in. We're just going to be calm. Be calm. Uh, Kate walks in and uh, why is this happening to me? I'm totally having a, you know, what's funny is I'm not nervous. I'm just have a lot of excitement and a lot to talk about. So I'm like, yeah, a lot happened in the episode. Exactly. (laughs) Um, Anyway, uh, Kate walks in. She's trying to be kind to Mary and Mary is quickly like, I told you so. Yeah. I told you and it's nice that mary is standing up for herself because for so long she just wanted kate to be her sister and now that kate's come around after goofing yeah mary's like no so i appreciate the fact that she stands her ground even though obviously they make up but it was just nice to see that she's like i was right yeah because you haven't seen that friction or the downfall of what happened yet. So I, I did like, I appreciate that moment too, because that wouldn't, it's not something you can just be like, 
Right. Like, be done with. So. Well, it's just nice because for so long, Mary was trying and trying yeah. and trying. And be my sister, be my sister. I just want to be your sister. Yeah. And now she's getting what she wants. Yeah. And she's saying, no, I don't want to be your sister now anymore. Yeah. Like, you had your chance. You screwed up. I told you. Yeah. Your real sister is, like, loco. So. Yeah. Yeah. That was that. Okay, <laughs> now that everybody at home is probably like, and what is your problem? Let's move on to yeah. Parker. Okay. She's such a huge chunk of this show. Now, did you anticipate the hacker to be somebody who was that young? Not at all. Who do you think it was? Or if you could guess. I was trying to like think of who I thought it would be when we were watching. And at first I was wondering if maybe it was someone Alice hired to do her bidding. Mm-hmm. But then that led me to why did she, why did she do this? This doesn't make sense other than, you know, drawing Batwoman out. Mm-hmm. But then after that when they're like, oh, it's a girl. Right. Part of me was like, yeah, it's a yeah. girl. And yeah. then they, which, I mean, she's a bad person. But still, not really. Although we could have said she was a badass because, I mean, she is a hacker and super hella smart. Right. But, you know, she is a villain. So Ish. Ish, yeah. We can chalk it up to the fact that she's young and dealing with a lot. Yeah. Um, and her motives got her carried away. Yes. But that's a little bit extreme. Yes. Um, but- and I will say... She and her whole, like, it, okay, so this episode was a great theme. Obviously, they really wanted to talk about just owning who you are, be who you are. And, of course, this show being the first ever show with a queer lead character that mm-hmm. is also a superhero, yeah. it's like they owe it to the show and to the viewers to make something themed around that. Mm-hmm. But it definitely, excuse me, definitely came out of the left field for me in regards to the storyline this season. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Kind of. Like this episode in particular, just that that whole entire um, section of the... I'm not gotcha. mad at it. I yeah. loved it. Yeah. It was just so interesting because we're on this track about... No, yeah. Dad's going to jail. Mom just got killed. Alice did it. Da, 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 and then like out of nowhere, we have this whole like... Embrace who you are. And blah, I get blah, you. Blah, blah. Yeah. Again, great. It was just so out of the blue. Like a small little like tangent. But not like not necessarily a bad one, but just no, like, not at all, like but yeah. oh, we're going oh, okay. That's gotcha. what we're doing today. Yeah. Cool. Maybe and maybe that's because as a new show, they didn't wanna push it so so hard in like everybody's faces right at the beginning. Uh, that's makes my, sense. My, my one yeah. guess yeah, yeah. about it. That's yeah. great. So, you know, because I know some people would be like, oh, like they're pushing this, you know, they'll, they'll still they're say preaching. agenda yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. whatnot. So maybe that was a, just a decision that they said, you know, we're going to put this on the back burner for a second and let the show speak for itself for a bit before we get into the heavier, right. the heavier topics. I love that you said that. And I think you're so right, because when this show did first come out, you have a lot of people that came in, they watched it and they just wanted to see what it was about. And then you've got your people that. No offense, but they're a little bit more closed-minded, and they came right at, out the back, like, yeah. swinging. Yeah. No pun intended. But yeah. do you know what I mean? And yeah. now that we got rid of all those people who are like, I'm not going to watch this show because, bleh, yeah. LGBTQ, stupid. Um, now, now we can... Like, yeah, let's do this now. Yeah, for the people who are diehard fans that see this as just a show. Yeah. That's all it is. It's just a show that is telling the truth about what our world looks like today. Yeah. Now I mean, I all shows like it. this have a commentary in some sense. So, yeah. Yeah. No. So. But yeah, yeah I, originally I was just, it did seem a little. Random. Disconnected at first. Like mm-hmm. a little bit, just like a random way to distract you. But it, then it didn't. They did tie it in with like still bringing Alice into it too. So at first when yeah. they didn't bring, when they, when they brought Alice into it, then you're, you were able to see that they're still doing that, making sure it fits cohesively with. Right. Batwoman in what we've led up to this point. Right. So, um, did you think also too, that Parker's, uh, intention was what it was? Not at all. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think in my notes, I typed that literally the villain was an emotional teenager and I get that she's going through stuff. I totally get that. And I'm but glad that they did that. But I wasn't expecting that to be the bad, big bad of the week right. at all. Well, so yeah. I was like, okay, first of all, I think it's fantastic that you were able to hack all this stuff, but yeah. not fantastic because that's really unsafe. Yeah. However, what if, you know, by some fraction of a chance, she didn't push the button in time to stop the train? Everybody had died. 
Including herself. Yeah. Which I guess at that point she, she was so emotional. Yeah. yeah. But still, when Batwoman stopped the train, it was yeah. maybe this many inches. For those of you listening on the podcast, I'm not holding my fingers that wide. Yeah. It was only a few inches from that brick yeah. wall. When were you going to push the dang button? Yeah. And also, physics. Like, does she, you know, acceleration? It, you have to stop it first faster before it gets the rrr, last minute it can't rrr, stop that yeah at that fast of a speed so she, she can hack she, but she doesn't she maybe, failed that class yeah okay yeah <laughs> that's what happened she got an f <laughs> she skipped but um but yeah it seemed a little bit extreme to be proving her parents i get it like i yeah. get it um when your parents don't pay attention to you it hurts and you will do anything possible to a pay attention to you but b get them to pay attention to you in a loving way yeah when they disowned you uh you know she had made mention of the fact that her parents now are praying for her holding a rosary at night and it's uh, i'm not going to tangent but there is this thing called praying the gay yeah. away which is awful 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 um great that they brought it up in yeah. a light way they're, they're bringing it up they're addressing the issue exactly yeah. exactly um but then I also thought, too, when she was demanding money, I'm like, $5 million to skip town? Like, what? Yeah. That was weird. And you, the teenage touch to it was a GoFundMe page to get the money. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> Certain things, like, when you finally know she was a teenager. It makes sense. It made more sense. You're like, mm, it's a lot exaggerated. Right. Overly exaggerated in a different way, so... But th- th- it was not something I saw coming. So good on them for that. So I was going to say, good on the writers, too, for making those little essence of of her in what she was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back to, I love the speech that she gave. And it was not funny, haha, funny, ironic. Yes. That she's giving this whole entire speech to Kate Kane about, you have no idea. You have no idea what it's like to be like me and blah, 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 blah. Kate's like girl if you only knew like i got kicked out of freaking military (laughs) academy yeah 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 um but she's also preaching to somebody who has a completely different support system at home yes she didn't have to deal with that yeah ish her dad sent her off but yeah yeah whatever anyhow um so that's that that's my thing on uh on parker and when they wove into uh what's his slam I'm like, what's his slam? Officer Slam? I don't know if that was his real name, but Mr. March that kept on ending up at the right place at the right time. Oh, yeah, the the uh, cop. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what a douche, first of all. Because, like, (laughs) when he saved Kate and he leaned in and as soon as press came, he's like, ting, with his smile. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't take it. But what killed me was the second time around when she saved him and they're like, kiss 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 and he's trying to kiss her i'm like bitch you know that you are not in a relationship with her you're so taking advantage yeah douche probably why they were calling him captain america which also was interesting like a jab at marvel there that was interesting i was surprised they mentioned a marvel character in that situation i was like hmm is that gonna cause problems i don't know maybe i don't know (laughs) I like that sound effect. Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, okay, so going back to Kate, and, and she's trying to figure out if she should come clean because she feels like a fraud. And Luke is sort of right in the fact that he's like, it's such a great decoy because everybody knows that Kate Kane is lesbian and they're never going to suspect if Batwoman is dating Captain America that you are Kate Kane. She's like, yeah, but. It's a catch-22, because I get it. Like, she wants yeah. to be true to herself, but at the end of the day, when you're a superhero and you're in disguise, you're not yourself. Yeah. That's the point. It's supposed to be a double identity. Yeah. I understood his reason, like, his thinking mm-hmm. it was a good thing. Because everybody's identity, in, especially in DC, it's always super subtle. Like, how does no one know that this person is so-and-so? Is the, is so-and-so. Right. So when he said those words, I was thinking that's actually a good way to look at it. That yeah. not everyone's gonna think because if you are doing this, they're not. They're sort of gonna be like, well, it can't be Kate Kane. Like right. she's a lesbian. So right. He thinks I think in a more, in a different way than she does in the sense that he's thinking of it as 
the what it's going to be in the press, what it's going to right. be publicity and, and trying to protect her. Right. But she's not really one of those types of people. Right. She's not one to have someone else be like trying to protect her and stuff like that. She right. wants to do what she wants to do and she wants to protect herself. So it's just, I think that they just see the whole disguise in different ways and have right. different reasoning behind it. Right. So I did like that, that conversation and approach to Yeah. To so... I think it's hard for Kate because in Kate's personality, she's always been like, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm an open book because she came out when she was a kid. Yeah. So for her putting on this suit, it was one thing. But then when the press is labeling, labeling her another, I think that it's hard for her to be like, but that's not who I am. You guys, yeah. I'm not, I'm not that. And I'm yeah. not going to let you put me in a box. Yeah. But it tied in nicely with the whole mm -hmm. story with Parker. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not mad at that. Yeah. It was good. Um, uh, let's talk about Alice. Alice. All right. <laughs> but before that, though, I want to say thank you to everybody who is watching us via YouTube, or if you are listening to us on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify Podcasts, we appreciate it so much. And because of you, we are here and we love talking to you folks and about the shows that you love. And there's so many shows here at After Buzz. And so if you do like, please like and subscribe on YouTube or give us a, a little comment or rating on Apple Podcasts. It helps us continue to give you those shows. And thanks so much for helping us be the ESPN of TV talk. Ding! Woo -woo. <laughs> All right. I'm excited to talk about Alice because, you know, she's such a complex character. I've mm -hmm. always liked her, but I think I'm a little bit biased in that instead of looking at her from just like the story perspective, I'm also looking at her as an actor. And I keep watching yeah. this woman and going, oh my gosh, she is amazing. I love her at this character excuse me, as this character. But then in actuality, when I think about what the character is doing, she's out of her mind. Yes. And I think this episode finally solidified it for me, which sounds stupid because it's so blatant, but I think this forced me to have to go, okay, she she's like eight screws loose in terms of the way she thinks. She's, she honestly thinks she's doing these great things and helping Kate to become her sister again but then that just makes me really wonder and I don't know about you but doesn't that make you wonder what the hell happened to you in that house yes to the second part of that I definitely am wondering what what happened to make you this way right but on the other side of it uh that's what makes her such a good villain is a good villain you can for a small moment empathize with their reasoning as to why they are acting the way they are be it right. family be it friends be it love like there's always a reason of course and it's yeah. just the way that they go about it that's wrong and so that's why alice is so good because for a second you go, it makes sense she wants her sister right Ooh, but the way she mm, that's the problem right so i think but you realized it for the first time that she's crazy and just like Kate did. <laughs> Look, for lack of better words, she's batshit crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, and and Kate finally realizes it too. Yeah, for the first time, because that's the been that was the whole thing with her and Mary. Is she like, can't realize it that this woman is Cuckoo. not there. She's, but yeah, <laughs> and the fact that she keeps on putting people's lives at risk. Yeah. But the whole thing with Parker and then and tying Parker in and kidnapping Parker is. She, in her mind, she's like, if I destroy your reputation, then you just, you have to be with me. If I make you look like a non-hero, because you're not a fucking hero. Sorry. You're not a hero. You're not a hero. You belong with me and my family. Yeah. And the wild thing is then you've got Alice saying, why can't you accept me for me? Accept me for me. And then we got this other parallel theme of like being LGBTQ and having your parents accept you for you. <laughs> you're just like yeah speechless yeah i was because <laughs> this episode was all over the place so it it's really so was. hard to center my brain a little bit on it because <laughs> it did bump back and forth between all these different little subplots right like trying to add to alice and her and while dealing with this personal mm -hmm. way that you're trying to deal with things so it's interesting because yeah. we were just talking about before we started the show, it's even though the show opened with a big train sequence where yeah. it was about to crash and you're supposed to be high adrenaline, it started off slow for me. Yes. And then towards the end, it's like, 
boom, 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 boom. And all these things story-wise start happening. They're like, okay, great. Like, this is going somewhere. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, but in all that, too, we've got Dad who's been locked in jail this entire time. And it feels like Dad's just accepting the situation and not even trying to fight it. And for me, I wonder if that's because somewhere deep down there is a bit of guilt resonating because of whatever misdeeds his wife was involved with. Or maybe there's things that we don't know about. Or it's him possibly just punishing himself because of everything that's happened with Alice. You know, you know how some people do yeah. that? Like, they are wrongly being punished, but it's the only way they can be punished for something that mm -hmm. they're feeling guilty about. Yeah, I think... I think it was a bit of a, of all those things. He he is, in my opinion, probably one of the most moral people on the show in the sense that he has a moral compass. And, like, if he knows something wrong, he is going to feel guilty about it. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, he may not feel it right away. But now that he has time to be alone in a cell, he's thinking about all those things and being like, yeah, okay, I'm where I'm supposed to be type of thing. I can yeah. definitely see him being that person. Yeah. If he... If he sees hope later on then i maybe we'll see a change but right now i i think he's just trying to take it day by day and be like this is what it is right someone has to pay for the crimes my wife did too he could also right. be thinking that like she can't serve him she's dead right so maybe he thinks that it's his responsibility as well that right. someone pay for it so because we know justice is important to him right so yeah i was worried for him though yeah. just because of the fact that and it's interesting he was he, he got put in prison with a bunch of people that he's put away in prison, mm -hmm. which is clearly a safety issue. But I guess once you quote unquote kill someone, who cares if you're safe? Is my assumption. That's I don't think that's really how prisons it does work ish. I don't know. I've not been to prison. I think, I think we'll see more later on with that. Mm -hmm. But since it was the the mid season premiere I, and they just piled so much stuff we kind of lost a little bit of his story mm -hmm. but i think maybe we'll get more into it when the rest of the shows continue to pick up so i think it's just a timing issue mostly right because we saw the start of it you know the razor blade and his food and stuff like there's clearly people who are not happy with him being there or right also kind of happy he's there but at the same time very upset right <laughs> the guy is like just drops right. the phone because he's like it's your turn it's not my turn right. for the phone he's like yeah so there's definitely some but you know what's okay? So the guy who he, who played the gentleman in jail, yes. As much as he was supposed to be a prisoner and he was mean or whatever, something about his essence I wasn't buying as a mean guy. Yeah, and that's not that. anything offensive to the actor. It's just something about him. I'm like you're a mean guy, but you're sort of like a teddy bear. Yeah, I get that. I can I get know. that. I, I didn't know. get super intimidated vibes by him. No. Yeah. Um, anyway, so also I want to dive into Sophie because she is somebody who confided. While everyone's living their truths and sharing their truths, so does Sophie. And she has already gotten past the point where she thought Batwoman was Kate. Then she didn't think Batwoman was Kate because of some other things. And then also with Officer Slam, then that really solidified it's not Kate. So I'm going to go ahead and let you know that I'm dealing with this thing with my husband and... I don't know. Maybe I, in my own way, I am denying my truth. And I was like, well, all right. What? I was a little bit shocked that she confessed to that because, yeah, I, I thought that was going to last a little longer for her to admit that to someone. Right. So that kind of took me off left field that she, you know. Said it. Well, of all people, yeah. to Batwoman, yeah. like you would have thought she would have had that conversation with Mary or something that she knew yeah. a little bit better. Not Especially, someone she didn't know for right. sure who it was. And know. because Mary had been calling her out this whole entire season about, you know, you really hurt my sister. You know this one. Blah, 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 blah. Like mm -hmm. all these things, the logical person to talk to about it would have been Mary. Yes. So it, Maybe because Mary was just dealing with so much other right. stuff. Right. Yeah. But I also am glad that Sophie is dealing with that in her own way yeah and that she admitted the fact that because she roughed up that one guy mm -hmm. and part of me was like whoa what's <laughs> oh. happening and yeah. then she said it herself like she's just dealing with so much with her husband but i think it's more so yeah i'm sad that my boo is gone but i think i now have to face who i really am and it's something that i've been running away from for so long so yeah. how do i do this yeah it was know. it was a very like another kind of vulnerable moment in the sense that 
she was mentioning being ter- or does it terrify you? And mm-hmm. she's like, I don't know if it's that, that or that or if it terrifies me. And how often do we try to not think about something because it scares us? So it was just a very raw. Like, I feel like the most real we've seen is Sophie be and most yeah. honest. And yeah. I think that's why it was weird because obviously anybody who watches our show knows that we're not big supporters of Sophie as a character. We right. don't love her too much. But she's redeeming herself a little bit in this episode. Right. Which is nice because I – just could not stand her before. And right. I, I hate saying it. I just I just don't know why I didn't like her, but at least with this we are seeing her start to grow as a character and realize what kind of what path she set people right. down. I think that they are molding her to be the main yeah. love interest of eventually, course. but she does have to have her road to get there because you always have to have the conflict where the two loves can't be together until like yep. season three or something like that. Attention. So yeah. she's got to figure out her life. Yeah. Um, but Kate already has her life figured out. And you made a great point about the article that was written. So I'm going to let you talk about. Yeah. Who- so, and then at the end, so at the end, they finally, uh, Batwoman does decide to do an interview with, I forget the name of the magazine. Cat Co, I think it's the, was it. It's the magazine that Kara Danvers, Kara, 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 right? Yeah. Kara Danvers, AKA Supergirl. Yeah. Wrote an, uh, so she did, sat down with her to do the piece where she came out. Uh, and so that's how the episode ended was with Batwoman officially announcing that she was gay. And right. so... And that was a little Easter egg because it, she went to Kara to do it, which is another Easter egg for, for Supergirl. So, right. And that's someone who uh, she knows and she's known longer than most of the others, right? Like they, She met her earlier on than she met some of the other people, right? She was in the first – she was in a crossover not yeah. this past year but the year – Two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and she was an error. Yeah. Well, well they, all, good, they were all connected. Yeah, and she kind of has a, a, a good relationship with Kara, though, from what I saw of the crossovers. Mm-hmm. So I just thought that was an interesting little Easter egg that they threw in that they're like, hey, they're they're still connected. Mm-hmm. Our, don't worry. Like, even though the crossover is over, mm-hmm. they're still in contact. They're still in connection. They did mention Oliver Queen. So they are doing a good job at trying to at least somewhat reference those things. And so um, it was a good way to end it, though, because even though she did make that choice and he, he may not have approved of it, and mm-hmm. she made the choice that she needed to make, and you know it's it was cool, right? It was good. And it was a little cool way of doing it. So. And at the end of the day, she turned around and then she inspired Parker. Yes, correct. Yeah, so it showed Parker reading it, right? The yeah. Well, yeah. she came in, and then also too, Parker then had to serve her time for yes. doing what she did, yes. which is pretty light. It's only 150 hours of scrubbing some confet- confetti, graffiti, graffiti. Yeah. Wow. Um, and paying back though, paying back the people, of but I mean, that just means the money that she was given, she has to give it back. Right. But, yeah. I'd be more worried about that, honestly, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, then she offered, I, I wonder if we're going to see more of this character because when the, when Parker first work, walked into the office immediately, I was like, is this going to be our version of a Robin? Is she now going to be part of the team? But obviously hmm. not yet. Yes. If she is. Hmm. But Ruby left the door, not Ruby, call her by her real name. Uh, Kate, Kate left the door open for her saying, you know, if you ever want to talk to somebody, if you need anything, whatever, I'm here. You can come to me. And how cool is that to know that you can go to Batwoman yeah. for advice in your personal life? That's yeah. pretty neat. Yeah. All right. Uh, I feel like we we talked about a lot of this episode. We yeah. cover most things. We don't ever chat live, unfortunately, right now. So we can't go to their questions. Yeah. Ooh. Sorry, folks. But that's okay because we got a lot of good Juicy stuff to share. So first, we're going to go back to hashtag our badass beast. Roar! I love the sound of I that. I know. <laughs> um, and then we changed it up just a little bit. So we were using our real life examples. Yes, correct. But now we're going to keep it in the show a little bit because every individual cast member does something in their everyday lives that makes them a badass beast. And why not highlight it here? So. Yeah. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about Ruby Rose. So first and foremost, we have a video that I'd like you to take a look at. This actually came out, I want to say, in 2014. Typically, there is music playing behind it, but that's okay because you get the visual effect, and I'll explain to you what's going on. So for a very long time, Ruby Rose had a hard time dealing with her sexuality and being told, you know, grow your hair out. And, and be more feminine and whatever, whatever. And she did temporarily. She actually worked for MTV in Australia. She was a VJ um, host, you know. Yeah. And she grew her hair out and this, that, and third. She just felt like she wasn't being herself. 
And, you know, she's a model and stuff like that. Yeah. And so finally, after just doing what everybody wanted her to do, she said, fluff it. I want to be myself. And that's that's what she looks like now. And she accepted an award actually at one point in her life. And she had said to other people, like, look at me now. Like, I told you guys I was going to do something great to anybody who bullied me for being androgynous or what have you as a younger person. Look at me now. And so... As that plays, if you are listening this to uh, listening to us, excuse me, on iTunes, be sure to look on YouTube to find this because it's Ruby starting off really, really feminine and then just like cutting all her hair off, wiping off all the makeup, uncovering her tattoos. And, and then I want to read this little blurb really quick. So one of the things she said is when she was in her teens, she tried to be feminine. Her mom was pushing her to do modeling and everyone kept saying, like, I'm a pretty girl. And then one day it just got too much and she shaved her head and she said, F you to everyone who thought I needed to look a certain way. And she got bullied after that. She said that she found herself in really dangerous situations. A lot. Uh, one guy at one point hit her and he mm -hmm. said that normally I wouldn't hit a girl, but you're not a girl. Um, and then she said she also used to be really afraid. She said she remember being four years old and binding her breasts at four, like with an ace bandage, because she was so afraid she didn't want her her boobs to come in, mm -hmm. um, because obviously she just didn't feel, yeah, you know. Anyways, so amen to her for just owning who she is. And then this video was not meant to be this big, huge, successful thing at the time. She was mostly just known in Australia, and she's like, oh, you know, maybe a few hundred thousand of my Facebook fans will see this mm -hmm. and it ended up going viral yeah and being watched over and over again so just wanted to share that with all of you and it worked perfectly with today's theme about owning who you are yeah not only that but i think it was also the fact that she had all her tattoos covered and then because there's also stigma about people having lots of tattoos yes too. so i think that was another reason why it went viral too was in that sense that it was saying hey you can have lots of tattoos too and that's beautiful and that's fine and just be right. who you are as well so because I remember seeing this, like, a while ago, right? It came out a while ago, 2014. Right? Okay, that's what I thought. I remember seeing this, so. Nice. Either way. Yeah. All right, and then we also have some pictures, being that, of course, she is from Australia. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you go on to her Instagram, she has a post of just a vacation she recently took. But you can see that in the sky, there's quite a bit of smog. Not smog, but fog. Smog. Smoke, thank yes. you, from the fire. And if you can read it, awesome. If you can't, I'll just read a little bit. But basically, she donated $50,000 to numerous fire brigades around the country and wildlife organizations, which I commend her. Yeah. But she is just encouraging other people to just be more aware and be more conscious. And, like, yeah, you know, global warming is real. I don't want to preach, but it's real, people. And she's talking about that there. Yeah. So that's that. Let's get into news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. Fun. So news and gossip. We're going to talk about Megan Tandy, who we all know and love, is Sophie. She's going to be coming to Tampa, Florida for QFX May 29th and 31st in 2020. So if you are in Florida, be sure to swing on by. If you're not in Florida, maybe you want to get tickets. You're giving you, we're giving you the notice in advance, so that way you can make plans ahead of time. But if you're not familiar with QFX, it is actually the equivalent of a Comic Con, but it's specifically for LGBTQ to be inclusive and make events accessible for queer fans and celebrate LGBTQ content. So of course it makes mm -hmm. total sense that she's going here. So anyway, just wanted to share that with you guys so you can make some plans. But some fun facts about Megan Tandy is that she actually used to be a pageant queen. She was Miss California and she was one of the top five for Miss America. I want to say this is 2016 or 2017. So it's a little bit of a TBT for you guys. Look at her. She looks so young. Yeah. And if again, if you're on iTunes, by all means, Google these photos and all this information. You can see what we're talking about. So that's that. That's my quick little news piece. Let's get into predictions. Your After Buzz TV predictions. Girl. I have no idea. Uh, I was trying <laughs> to think of something. I mean, I predict that uh, Alice is just a little bit crazy out of her mind. And that we saw in the preview that quote unquote Beth comes back. Yeah. And, you know, these teasers are pretty tricky when they show us little snippets. And they make you think one thing and you watch the episode. And it is so different. Yeah. But from what I gather, 
first of all, Beth's like, I just came back from, co- girl, did you go to college late? What's going on here? Because she's like, you've still been gone for what, 15 years? Yeah, I guess so. But I, they showed the picture of her as Beth. And I'm like, okay, so you put on a brown wig and you're Beth now? Are we sociopathic? Are we psychopathic? What is happening? Like, yeah, like, we don't know that it's not actually Alice, for one. Well, and then you got the little clip, uh, audio clip of um, Kate saying, my wish came true. Like, her yeah. birthday wish. Yeah. I'm like, okay, are we doing this whole, like, infinite, like, infinite Earth thing? What's, what, what would she, like, what? So I'm curious. Leave comments below, because I want to know what your predictions are. If you think that it is Beth from another Earth. If you think that it just happens to be Alice who's just out of her mind and trying anything she can desperately to get Kate to be in her life, that's the team I'm on. I, I kind of like that idea. I don't know that it is that, but it, like a schizophrenic type thing. Right. Yeah. Or, I don't know, there's another Beth running around and Mouse actually put Beth's face on some other chick who is Alice and this whole time, because you saw, you saw yeah, that no, she, like, Kate was that. trying to like tear off her face and be like, is yeah. this you, is this you? So. I didn't even think about that because we don't know where Mouse is. He's around. He was ready to push the button on the detonator. Yeah. So mm, that's a good prediction too. Thanks. I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah. Hard drive. Yeah. So did I leave you with uh, anything to predict or are you like, I, oh yeah, I like both of the first and third one because we don't know where Mouse is. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go the prediction that it, it is a fake mask and that it's someone else pretending to be Beth. And that was a plan that they made all along in case if she gets arrested. Good. That'll be my prediction. Nice. So. Cool. <laughs> well, we got our predictions in. I'm going to turn to the front so you can see both of us. Thanks for joining us. We're so glad to be back in 2020 and glad to have you to, conter- to continue the conversation and have patience with me as my mouth does these weird things that spits out a lot of words. <laughs> so please continue the conversation. Join us on social media. I'm at yours truly, Ali Kona, with little underscores in between. Find me on Instagram because that's really where I'm at, more likely. And I'm Katie. You can find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at KT underscore Christine. I am active on both. And I, if you guys do have your predictions or thoughts and you don't want to comment on the YouTube, you can tweet me and I'll try to respond to as many as possible. And we will see you next week. That's right. Bye. Goodbye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. (laughs) The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 